Welcome back to another day of how to build an X case. This time, the case is going to be the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic Mini. Is it Mini ITX? Is it Micro ATX? Is it ATX? We don't know. It's just an in-betweener case. So we're going to see what it's like building inside this case. We don't have any custom liquid cooling or anything like that. It's going to be a fairly standard build, but we're going to have a lot of RGB going on. It's going to be a complete headache. So. Yeah, I'll suffer through this, but we'll suffer through it together. So we're going to see what it's like building inside this PC case. So let's get into it. All right, first thing we're going to do is prepare this case to get ready to build in it. So first thing we're going to do is take off the panels. As you can see, we have a myriad of different thumb screws, which looks quite intimidating. But you're only looking at the top portion over here. If you're seeing these over here, it's because you can mix and match the PCIe slots with the fan and rear I.O. shield over here and you could do a bunch of funky things with it. It's very modular in that regard, but we're gonna get the panels off, so let's do that first. In order to get the front and side glass panels off, you gotta take off the top panel first, and this kind of just slides off over here, and then you have a magnetic dust filter up top over here. It's like a little notch over here to grab the magnetic dust filter. I like that. Good thinking right there. It's simple. Now that we have the top panel off, we can access these two glass panels. All you have to do is just slide this up and it just kind of notches in right here and they have rubber insulation on the inside of the panel here to kind of isolate any vibrations which is pretty normal but always good to see that same thing goes for the front panel here just lift and take out now just be a little careful when you lift this out as as soon as the little notches come out it can fall out pretty easily so just make sure you're supporting it when you're taking off the panel okay same thing here for the rear panel over here just undo these two thumb screws Nothing too crazy, and they're, and they're capped too, or captive, so they just stay right there in the panel. And then the rear panel also comes with two sets of dust filters, both magnetic, one for the PSU and one for the fans going towards the front of the case. Now that we have the panels off, we can get ourselves acquainted with the case. Now, as you can see here, this is a pretty narrow plane for motherboard. So this really only supports an ITX motherboard in terms of width. If you want to use a micro ATX or full-on ATX motherboard, you will have to use this little extension piece that comes out like this, and it'll cover up the grommets here. So that can be either a pro or a con, depending on whether or not you want to see the black grommets there. Um, but that can help hide up some cables in case that's what you're going for. It, it's kind of interesting because you have all this length for an ATX board, but only the width for a mini ITX board initially without any sort of expansion. So it's a bit bizarre, but you know, like I said, it's an in-betweener case. Now on the bottom of the case here, we have a dust filter that pops out like this. And then the bottom is usually used for intake fans. And then we can use the top and this side panel over here towards the rear for all exhausts, including the one over here. And along with that extension piece, you also get a bunch of different pump mounts if you're doing custom water cooling, which is very neat. This case is definitely emulating modularity. As you can tell from all the thumb screws, the different types of pump plates, it's it's very dynamic as the name insists. So when you're thinking about this in regards to a, a pretty typical PC build without any custom water cooling, it can be a bit difficult to decide which parts you want to dedicate yourself to. So for the sake of this build, we'll be using an ATX motherboard and we're really gonna stack this thing out. All right, so for our front IO, or I guess top IO here, we have two USB 3.0 ports, a USB Type-C 3.1, headphone, audio jack, mic jack, and then we have our power button. Fairly simple, but a good range of usability out of the top IO over here, which I like to see that USB Type-C. All right, so the first thing that you do in this case is actually put the power supply in. So in order to do that, we need to take out this SSD tray, which is removable with this thumb screw over here, and this little screw over down here. Okay, you'll notice that we have some cable management going over here where we have some routing going on with some tie down points over here. It's not much though, it's actually quite tight in regards to the rest of the case in terms of size. So what we're gonna do is take out this hard drive cage because this hard drive cage is not gonna be used. I don't have any hard drives that I need to use and it will free up a lot more space. Now you might be asking what size of power supply actually fits in this thing. So you can either use an SFX or an SFXL power supply in here, which is a bit disappointing. So we're gonna use an SFX power supply here. We're gonna take out this hard drive cage and we're gonna to try to free up as much room as possible. So to take out the hard drive cage, it's 
pretty simple. You take this slot, this little cover off, and then you have access to your two drive cages over here, and then you have these four screws that you just need to take out. Now, I do want to show you guys the mechanism for taking out these trays here, which is actually pretty smart. So if you notice, there's a little thumb screw here. It might be a little hard to see because it's black on black. You just undo that thumb screw, and then you slide this little slot over, and then you can take these out. And they just slide right out and then you screw in your HED or your SSD into there if you need the space for it. So anyways, we're going to remove this and put in the power supply. All right, now that we have the power supply installed, what I'm going to do next is install this little extension piece for the motherboard. So it kind of just slots in and actually stays in place, which is really nice. And then you just screw in the pieces over here with their respective holes and you've got yourself an extension piece. It's Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But since the extension is on, this is gonna make the clearance a little bit tighter. So what I'm gonna do is pre-route some of the bigger cables just so I don't have to mess with that later. All right, so I have my bigger cables routed around here and I also have the extension put in. This is actually pretty sturdy, sturdier than I was expecting. And then another nice thing is that you have all these different standoff positions that you can choose in case your motherboard has some different layouts or in case you're thinking about changing up this side of the case over here. Now, another nice thing is, is that you have clearance on the bottom and the top. So once you put in even an ATX motherboard, it's not completely cramped for wires if you're trying to route them through up and below. So with that being said, I'm now gonna put in the motherboard. All right, I got the motherboard in and I pre-routed some wires. So like I said before, we got clearance down here and up here, but I do plan on putting fans down here and up on the top panel over here as well. But that's gonna go in last because I don't wanna block myself off for access with these cables. Now there might be a little bit of room on this diagonal, but I wanna make sure that I have everything plugged in before I put in those fans up top and on bottom. So the cables I did route were the front IO, HD audio, SATA, and the USB 3.0, 3.1, the EPS or CPU power connector over there. But I left the motherboard power connector over here unplugged. And that's because when you plug it in, it's going to bow out. And I have a rad going over here with two fans on top of it. And that's going to stick out quite a bit. So I need to make sure I have that clearance. But the important thing is, is that I have these cables out already. So uh, I'll have more going on over here, like I said. But this is as far as I want to go in terms of pre-wiring. Now, the next thing to do is to get the radiator in and the CPU cooler attached. So... Let's do that. All right, so I went ahead and I plugged in everything for this Corsair cooler, the H100i RGB Platinum SE. I went ahead and plugged in the motherboard power connector here, as you can see, and you actually have some pretty decent clearance over here uh, if you're using a 240 millimeter rad over here. If you're using a 280, it might be a little bit tighter, obviously, but still, even with an ATX motherboard, the gap is actually pretty nice. So. Uh, you can pre-route if you want. It's not 100% necessary for these bigger cables. I just like to do it just to make life a little bit easier. But now with the CPU cooler installed, we're going to now install these Leon Lee SL120 fans. I'm going to have six total. So there's going to be three up on top, three on the bottom. The bottom will be intake. This will be exhaust. Obviously, that will be exhaust. All right, something I wanted to point out when installing the fans. I'm installing the bottom ones first. As you can see here, we got plenty of clearance down over here. And it's fairly simple to actually install these fans. They're great. They clip into each other. They have these contact points so you don't have a thousand wires coming out of them. It's a very nice system. I'm very impressed with these SL120 fans from Leon Lee. And they have RGB both in the front and the back. So since we have intake fans here, the back of the fan will be facing towards the interior of the case. Meaning what's on display is the back of the fan. And the RGBs are also there as well. So that's nice to see that they have a display side on both sides. Also, notice over here we have cutouts in the feet over here so that you can screw the fans into place with these little cutouts so it gives you access to the railing points beyond over here. So very well thought out, very easy to install. I'm really appreciating how well this is set up here for fan installation. We've got the fans installed and I gotta say these SL120s from Leon Lee are one of the best. Absolutely one of the easiest installations I've ever had to deal with with RGB. So with that being said, now let's talk about what the next steps are. Looking up at the top over here, there's nothing left for me to plug in, luckily, because I would strongly recommend plugging in whatever you have to plug in up here before you install fans up here. The next thing I'm gonna do is get the GPU installed and the SSD. So for the GPU installation, if you wanna to get to the screws that mount the GPU into the PCIe slots over here, these two thumb screws open up 
like a door. So this allows you to have full on clearance to screw in your GPU. Okay, so here we have our SSD bracket over here. We have the cutouts for the cables. And you can also see that we have this slot in method. So we have these little grommets that sit right on top over here. And then you have these screws over here, which are threaded for the lower half and flat for the top half. That being so that they can go into the grommets like so, and that the threaded half, whichever is remaining, can now be screwed into the SSD. So once you have all four grommets screwed into the SSD, you can then slot in the SSD into the SSD tray. So once you have all your grommets installed, push the grommets through on this side. It will take a little bit of force, and it'll also take a little bit of force to notch them down into the locking position. And then there you go, it's ready to be installed. All right, so I have some very lazy cable management going on. There's definitely plenty of space back here. If you remove that tray or that whole entire cage, and the last thing I would put on is this SSD tray. And I also routed some of the cables through some of the holes here, meant for the other SSD for this uh, control unit for the Leon Lee fans. So that actually works out pretty nicely. It actually looks kind of neat. So it all worked out really nicely. Cable management with the hard drive cage in there is going to be tight. Without it, it's pretty good. Cable routing is excellent. Clearance is also very good in this case. Overall, the case is a solid build quality as you would expect for Leon Lee at this $150 price point. It has a bit of an identity crisis on what kind of form factor it wants to be. It can fit an ATX motherboard just fine. It just doesn't have room for a bigger power supply and that's where kind of some of the cons come into play. It doesn't know what it quite wants to be but it can do a lot. So I can't say it's a mini ITX case or a micro ATX case. It's just a little bit of everything. If it's the form factor you're looking for, something smaller than the O11, then it's great. But you'll definitely need that motherboard extension in case you're doing anything larger than mini ITX. And if you're doing a mini ITX in here, it's going to be a lot of empty space unless you're doing custom water cooling, which I mean, this is kind of what it's designed for. Even with all this stuff in here in a full on ATX motherboard, Still got plenty of space in here. It's probably one of my most aesthetic builds. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Of course, we're going to do B-roll. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.